All right. Well, let us go ahead and get started. So today we are talking about Aging Skincare 101. This is a passion project of mine. Um, obviously, I've learned some things as a pharmacist. Um, skincare is definitely something that we cover in pharmacy, but it also is a personal project of mine. Um, I'm in my 40s. I'm going through perimenopause. And uh, I don't know, I just really want to age as well as possible. I just really want to keep my skin in good health. I want to improve my barrier function, um, all of that. So I am constantly researching skincare and how to age well. Um, okay, so that is the introduction. Let's go ahead on. All right, welcome to Regenesis Rx. That is where you're at right now, where I teach monthly classes all about different healthcare related topics, different pharmacy related topics to try and help the people. And Trish, so happy to see you. My besties here. I'm excited. Now we can begin. <laughs> all right. Next month, we are going to have a class called Is Gluten Free Right for Me? I get lots of questions about going gluten free um, because a lot of people don't have celiac. Now, we all know if you have celiac, you've got to be gluten free, but there are multiple other things that being gluten-free can be beneficial for, including Hashimoto, something that I myself suffer from. So we're going to discuss who might benefit from a gluten-free diet, how to go about doing it. I will say it's a lot easier than it was a decade ago, guys. I personally am gluten-free because of my Hashimoto's. Um, so we're going to talk all about that. Now, as I said before, I am going to release the ebook to everyone. Hi, Trish. I saw that you're un, uh, that you're finally connected to audio. I was just saying my bestie's here so we can officially begin. <laughs> so, um, all right. The ebook will be available to everyone. I decided to change it up this month. I wanted to go ahead and share the wealth with everyone. Normally it's only for app subscribers. Next month, it's only going to be for app subscribers, but you guys are lucky. If you're not within the app, you get the ebook, no app required for this month. All right, so what are we going to cover? Oh, well, let me introduce myself. Hi, I'm Pharmacist Jamie. You guys probably know me from social media. I have been a pharmacist now for quite some time. I was in retail pharmacy for about 12 years. Now I am a clinical pharmacist, so it's kind of nice. I get to see like all different sides of pharmacy. I also worked in a compounding pharmacy for a while, so it's wonderful. I feel like I've just gotten to see so many different things with my career, and I just love taking that knowledge and sharing it with you guys. All right, what are we going to cover today? We're going to cover the characteristics of aging skin, intrinsic and extrinsic factors that affect skin aging, retinoids, one of my favorite topics other skincare ingredients, and the ideal morning and night regimens to keep your skin aging well and looking healthy. Standard issue disclaimer here, you guys, this is for educational purposes only. This is not specific medical advice. Do not take anything I say here as a prescription for you. It is best if you take anything discussed here and talk about it with your dermatologist, your doctor, someone who knows you personally, because not everything is meant for everyone. All right, let's jump right on in. The characteristics of aging skin. There are quite a few. Sorry, guys, I got to keep jumping back and forth to admit people in. So I got two different screens here. <laughs> All right, decreased elasticity and skin thinning is one of the big things that we see. This is due to a loss of collagen. Now, collagen actually starts to decline in our 20s, but most people don't notice it until their 40s, especially for women, because estrogen supports collagen production. So women will tend to notice a very dramatic change. A lot of women tell me it, it happened overnight. Like my skin was fine. I had like a few little fine lines, nothing I was too concerned about. And then all of a sudden my skin is dry. It's paper thin. Sometimes you can even get acne as you're going through perimenopause. Your skin just becomes a huge problem where before it was perfectly fine. So that is one of the big things that we see with women, but men as well, as we age, just naturally the collagen production declines, the collagen thins out. It doesn't repair itself as quickly. It's problematic. We'll, we will talk about ways to boost collagen in just a little bit. Pigment irregularities. This is another very common characteristic of skin aging. These can be sunspots, freckles that increase in size and frequency, 
Melasma can become an issue where it wasn't before. That is unusual patches of dark skin. Um, I developed melasma right here. So it kind of looked like I had a little mustache 24 seven, had to get that taken care of by my dermatologist. Even white spots that appear on the skin. Sometimes we'll see people who develop white spots due to skin aging and sun damage. So that's another possibility. It's not all dark spots. Increased pore size, extremely common as we age. All of a sudden you're seeing every pore on your face. Lines and wrinkles, obviously. These appear from years of muscles contracting in the same way over and over, causing little folds in the skin that start to stay even when your muscles are not contracting. Loss of volume is a huge characteristic of skin aging. This is caused by both fat and muscle decreasing with age. Our skin will literally start to like sag off of our bones because it doesn't have the underlying muscle and fat to hold it in place where it used to be. Unfortunately, our face is the one place where we lose fat as we age. Unlike the midsection or other areas of our body that have no problem hanging on to fat, our face will lose fat volume. A baby face is like a round face that has a lot of fat underneath the skin. An older face just doesn't have that same fat to hold up the skin and make it look plump. Okay, so what are intrinsic factors that affect skin aging? Genetics, that's it. <laughs> it is completely out of our control and influence. Some people are just genetically blessed. They will age better than others. They can do all kinds of terrible things to their skin. They never even apply moisturizer, it doesn't matter. They look great, it is what it is. You just unfortunately have to accept the hand that you've been dealt make peace with it and focus on what you can influence. Don't obsess about, oh my gosh, I'm aging like the Crypt Keeper because of my genes. You can do so many things outside of genetics. So just ignore that part. It is what it is. What are the extrinsic skin factors that affect skin aging? Guys, this is huge because this accounts for approximately 80% of skin aging and appearance. So genes is about 20%. 80% are things that you have control over, okay? This is not just something that you can't do anything about. There are things that we can control and influence to a great extent. Number one, ultraviolet exposure. Lots of things happen with ultraviolet exposure. It causes free radicals and oxidative stress to the skin. This is going to age your skin. It causes degradation of collagen. Collagen is the big key player when it comes to skincare. If you've got good collagen, you've got good skin. If your collagen is suffering, you don't have good skin. Okay, that is the number one thing. Ultraviolet exposure impairs production of new collagen. It's like a one-two hit. It degrades your collagen. It won't let you make new collagen. Bad, bad, bad. It also increases DNA damage. This can lead to skin cancer and it actually will lead to overall aging. Obviously aging in your skin, yes, but this DNA damage is not just skin deep, all right? It can actually promote aging and problems deep within your body just by consistent sun exposure. As you can see this picture here, this is so interesting. This is one of my favorite pictures. This is a truck driver who never wore SPF. So they got more sun exposure on the left side through the truck window. That's another thing. A lot of times people say, well, I don't really go outside. If you are getting in your car and driving anywhere, you are being exposed on that side only. It's like even worse because now you're gonna end up like this where one side is dramatically different when it comes to aging than the other side. The damage is apparent, all right? I mean, you can see on the right side that this is someone who is aging. You still see like the bags under the eyes, the lines, the wrinkles, whatever. But guys, just look at the left side. Who do you want to be when you're in your 70s? You know what I mean? Like, which side are you going with? So that just shows very clearly, very dramatically what the sun will do on the same person, you know, same genetic makeup. So please take that to heart. If you choose to never wear SPF, you might as well stop watching now. I know that right now there are a lot of like influencers online. There are a lot of people saying, oh, we need the sun. We need the sun. Like it's good for us. There are things that the sun does for us that are positive. Like it promotes vitamin D production. It can like help wake you up. It can help with your uh, melatonin production. If you get sun exposure early in the morning, all of that is absolutely true. But guys do not 
spend time sitting out in the sun without SPF protection, unless you have plenty of melanin to protect yourself, because it does increase this DNA damage and the skin aging. Yes, it has some positive things to it, but there are also a lot of negative things associated with it. Okay. And SPF is safe and effective. I know there's like a lot of stuff going on about like, oh, sunscreens are poison. First of all, you can just wear clothes and a hat. It doesn't have to be sunscreen. And the mineral sunscreens are not absorbed into your skin. The chemical ones, I'm not a huge fan of. Yes, they can be absorbed into the skin. You know, a lot of dermatologists say, yes, they're probably perfectly safe. I get that. I personally don't like things that are absorbed into my skin unless I'm 100% sure they're safe. So I opt for the physical chemical sunscreen, for the physical sunscreens, the titanium dioxide and all that but you've got options. Okay. So just keep that in mind. All of these influencers saying all of these things, they kind of generate views and likes and traction by being controversial. And by saying things that go against the grain, it's not necessarily the best advice. Okay. And guys, if you have pale skin, this is especially important. If you have plenty of melanin in your skin, if you're darker skinned, your skin is much more naturally protected. If you're pale like me, um, you have no natural protection against the sun. It just causes DNA damage like immediately. Okay, the next extrinsic factor that you have control over, that is so hard for me to say, <laughs> extrinsic factor, all right, is smoking and alcohol consumption. Smoking increases an enzyme that breaks down collagen and also inhibits collagen production. Once again, that is the one-two punch that is just death for your skincare. And alcohol inhibits absorption of key nutrients required for collagen. That is one thing that people often don't understand is how much alcohol affects digestion. It's almost like taking a PPI every day, which hopefully by now you guys know my stance on that. Not a great idea for most people. You do need it if you have Barrett's esophagus or something like that. But taking a PPI just inhibits your ability to absorb all kinds of amazing nutrients, the building blocks that we need to keep our bodies healthy. Alcohol does the exact same thing. It can deplete you in all kinds of things, including thiamine. Like it, it, it can deplete things even more than a PPI actually. It's crazy how much alcohol affects your digestion. Now, these pictures that you see here, these are two different sets of twins. One of the twins smoked their entire lives and the other one didn't. Um, unfortunately, like I pulled this off of actually another lesson talking about smoking. So the graphic is kind of switched. Like the two inside twins, those are the ones who smoked. All right. The two outside twins are the ones who didn't smoke. So it would be nice. Like if both of the smokers were on the left side and non-smokers on the right, that's not the way the graphic is. So sorry, it's a little bit confusing, but you can see there the difference in aging between just being exposed to smoke and staying away from smoke. Huge, huge difference. Once again, which twin do you want to be? Whose skin do you want to have, right? Okay, diet. Diet is huge, all right? There are lots of things that you can do with your diet to help improve your skin. Number one, you can try to eat more lycopene. This has natural sun protection within food. Still use your SPF. Sometimes I'll see influencers saying, oh, all you got to do is eat tomatoes and then you don't need to use SPF. That is absolutely not true. <laughs> but it is nice to have this extra immunity. I myself, I went to the beach a couple weekends ago. I reapplied SPF continuously. I still got burned, you know? So it's nice to have that extra backup plan of like, okay, I'm eating plenty of these red foods and these orange fruits. So I have that little extra layer of some protection that can help prevent DNA damage. Um, over here, you'll see the foods that contribute to that, red and orange foods. Tomatoes are the biggest one, but anything like that. More omega-3s. These are anti-inflammatory. They soothe irritation and dermatitis. They also bolster the skin's ability to retain water by enhancing barrier function. Okay, that just basically keeps your skin barrier intact. You don't have, you know, these massive pores, these little holes, this thin barrier that doesn't really protect you. You want to keep your barrier intact. Omega-3s are found in salmon, avocado, nuts. If you're like me, you take an omega-3 supplement. Those of us who have pets, a lot of times you have to give your pets fish oil or omega-3s because it helps their coat and their skin as well. So also same thing applies to people. Eating more antioxidants is very beneficial. Antioxidants protect the skin cells from oxidative damage. 
These are found in blueberries, green tea, tomatoes, once again, citrus, broccoli, carrots, antioxidants are basically fruits and veggies, and also green teas. Eating less refined sugars. This is huge. Refined sugars lead to something called advanced glycation end products. Basically, this is just junk that gloms onto the proteins and lipids within our skin and also within other areas of our body. And it just causes major issues. It inhibits collagen production. It just kind of junks everything up. It's, it's awful. These really become a factor with diabetic patients. You'll see that these patients have issues throughout their body due to these advanced glycation end products. They really tend to be present in the skin, the kidneys, the nerves, and the eyes. Those are all the things that we see diabetic patients suffering from. Limiting processed sugar greatly reduces the presence of these advanced glycation end products. That's why people with diabetes experience these issues. They just have elevated blood sugars most of the time. The advanced glycation end products glom onto these proteins and lipids. They junk up everything. They cause massive, massive issues, prevent collagen production. It's a vicious, vicious cycle. These wreak so much havoc in our skin and other sensitive areas of our body. So try to keep the blood sugars low, balance those blood sugars, avoid refined sugars as much as you can. If you're gonna eat sugar, get it from fruit. That just doesn't work the same way. Sometimes people say, oh, don't eat fruit, that's too much sugar. Not true, you guys. Fruit, it, it's totally different. It's packaged up with fiber and your body just absorbs it differently than it does these refined sugars. Eating less processed meats can also be very beneficial. Processed meat is inflammatory. Now, what is processed meat? People ask me this all the time. Like, what does that even mean? It's basically meats that have been preserved through methods like curing, salting, uh, smoking, uh, canning, adding preservatives, anything like that is a processed meat. So that includes lunch meat. A lot of times people say, what are you talking about lunch meat? Like I get salami, but you know, what about some of these other things? They preserve it with nitrates and nitrites. They're not just cutting up the turkey right there and handing it to you. It is preserved. It is cured with nitrates and nitrites. That's the problem. Same thing with bacon, full of nitrates and nitrites. Now you can get nitrate, nitrite free options. Okay. So that is something that you can look into. It's, it can be pricey. So not everyone can afford it, but if you can afford to do the nitrate and nitrite free, that is a much better option for your skin. And then obviously things like hot dogs, bologna, anything like that, where it's like just meat that is highly processed, thrown together from different parts of the animal. Clearly that is going to be an issue. Beef jerky, that's another one too. Okay, exercise. This is another extrinsic factor that will affect your skin. Exercise is so good for your skin. It improves circulation. It brings nutrients and oxygen to the skin. Those are the things that your body needs in order to keep healthy and to increase that collagen production. It also increases lymph flow. Lymph takes the junk away from our skin. It takes away all of these like nasty byproducts that you don't want sitting there in your skin, junking things up. Exercise, great for the skin. Sleep. This is another thing that's important. Oh, hold on. Got more people coming in. Sorry, guys. I didn't see that. Um, skin rebuilds collagen during sleep. Okay. So if you're not getting sleep, you are not building collagen appropriately. Sleep also repairs the ultraviolet and oxidative damage that happens during the day. This is when your body repairs itself everywhere, but including your skin. Sleep also allows the body to clear out toxins and to do like the basic housekeeping that it needs to get done. So make sure that you're getting enough sleep that your body can do all of those important things. Repeated muscle contractions. This is an extrinsic factor, factor that will, you know, affect your skin aging. Now, this is something, all these other things are like no brainers. Like you need to be doing these repeated muscle contractions. The problem with these is there's really only one way to prevent it. And that's Botox. So not for everyone. I'm not suggesting that everyone run out and get Botox, but it is just a fact that these repeated muscle contractions do age the skin. Basically they expel underlying fat over time. Like just when the muscle contracts, it pushes the fat out. After decades of this happening, that's when you start to see the permanent folds that don't go away even when you rest. It's because that fat has been pushed out. There's nothing there anymore. It's just skin. So it kind of folds up and gets loose and saggy. It also will increase muscle tone during rest. 
We'll see this a lot of times, especially in the neck. So as people age, they tend to get these bands. I know I have them, so I'm trying to be conscious of that. Um, but basically it's just like any muscle. If you work out any muscle over time, over decades, that muscle becomes stronger. And we see this so often with these platysmal bands in the neck. Like in your 20s, you don't even see them. They can rest easily. By the time you start hitting 40s and 50s, they're kind of active even during rest because they're very strong. They've been working out forever and they just have issues relaxing. And as I said, Botox is really the only way to address this. Now I have seen some people say that they try to like be less expressive with their face. They try to not, you know, be so expressive. Maybe that can help, I'm not sure. But when you look at the data, definitely Botox is the clear winner here. All right, now let's talk about retinoids. Retinoids are great. I love retinoids. I'm kind of obsessed with them from a research standpoint because they are just, they're the number one skincare ingredient, period, when it comes to research. There are two types. There is retinol. That is the weaker type. It comes in a 0.1 to 1% strength. And then there is tretinoin. Tretinoin is prescription only. It is much more powerful. It comes in a 0.01 to a 0.1% strength. So it sounds weaker, but it comes in those lower concentrations because it is so incredibly powerful. It is much more powerful than retinol. Tretinoin is stronger and more effective, but it is also more likely to cause irritation. So a lot of times I will suggest retinol, which is the over-the-counter variety for beginners or for those who have really sensitive skin or who maybe have rosacea, something like that. Tretinoin is for like the people who want to go hard, who just really want to prevent skin aging as much as possible. And they want to just get the strongest thing out there. I get it. I'm a tretinoin girl myself. So there you go. Okay. So what do retinoids do? Lots and lots of things. This is the most studied skincare ingredient. I just threw up a couple articles here that you can just kind of peruse if you want to. You can take a screenshot because I didn't include these in the ebook or anywhere else, but um, these are just two examples. There are so many. There are just like hundreds of studies on retinoids and all of the amazing things that they do for our skin. This is the thing that has the most evidence that it improves skin aging. What exactly does it do? Okay, retinoids will help exfoliate the skin. This helps to keep the skin looking fresh. It's just gonna take off that top layer of dead skin. Oh, hopefully everything is okay. <laughs> My Zoom is making noises. I don't know, hopefully we're good. It'll take off that top layer of dead skin. It will reveal the nice fresh skin underneath. It will also help increase collagen production. This helps with the elasticity and thickness of the skin. Like we mentioned earlier, collagen is the star when it comes to skin aging. You'll want it, you want as much of it as you can get. Retinoids will also help with pigment irregularities. They will reverse some sun damage. Okay, my screen keeps pausing. I hope everything's okay. I'm not sure why it keeps making that noise. Hopefully no one has unmuted and said, hey, stop, we can't hear you. So hopefully we're good. <laughs> um, but it will help with pigment irregularities. It will help improve the brightness of your skin. That is definitely something that I have noticed with retinoids is a lot of my little sunspots have disappeared. And you can see, I don't know if you guys can see actually, because the screen, but like I have a lot of like freckles and sun damage on my arms from when I was younger and didn't wear SPF very well. Um, you just see a lot of that versus on my face where I use retinoids, you really don't see that. And before I had started using retinoids, these two, like these looked the same, you know what I mean? And I have on zero makeup right now, you guys. So don't judge me, but um, my skin, it has pretty decent tone for someone who's in their forties going through perimenopause, right? I totally credit retinoids with that. Okay. Retinoids will also reduce fine lines and wrinkles. It will help give your skin a more plump, youthful appearance. It's not going to help with deep wrinkles. Okay. Those have the fat has already been expelled. You know, you're not going to be able to get back from that with something like retinoids, but the really fine lines. Yes, it can absolutely help. Retinoids also improve acne. I know that sounds really strange. Like we think of, we associate acne with being young, oily. We associate lines, wrinkles, all these other things with being older, having dry skin, but it is proven in the data. The retinoids actually improve both conditions significantly. So super interesting. So if you're going through hormonal acne with perimenopause, this can help with that. 
It will also improve the appearance of pores. So retinoids basically do everything. Now I wanted to talk about the do's of retinoids. I put retinol, I should have put retinoids. I just noticed that now. Um, but with retinoids, there is going to be irritation. A lot of people stop using retinoids right away because they assume that they cannot tolerate it very well. That's not true. Everyone goes through this adjustment period when it comes to retinoids. That is completely normal. Don't be intimidated by it. Your skin will be peeling. It will be red. That is normal. All right. So I'm going to talk about how you can kind of help minimize that and how to use retinoids appropriately because they can be drying and irritating as well. So it's something you kind of have to use with caution. Okay, as far as the do's of retinoids, start low and go slow. Use lower concentrations. You're probably gonna wanna start with retinol, the weaker version, rather than jumping right into tretinoin. Start doing it just twice a week, all right? Start with twice a week. After a few weeks or a month of that, increase to three times a week. After you've done that for a while, you can do four times a week. You just wanna very slowly build up to try and minimize all of that adjustment period. Many people discontinue retinoid use because of this adjustment period, which is really unfortunate because it is, it's the best thing for skin aging, period. Do use retinol at night. Using retinoids during the day will decrease the effects while increasing your chance of irritation. It is definitely best used out of the sun. Do use your retinoids with a high quality moisturizer. Retinoids are very drying. I know it's weird that we're putting on this drying ingredient to help with skin aging, but we know for a fact that it works. You just wanna seal in those retinoids with a high quality moisturizer, particularly one that has peptides. That is the best thing. It just really, peptides and retinoids work super, super well together. Do you use sun protection? Retinoids will make you photosensitive. That means that even if you're not someone who normally burns, who has issues with the sun, once you start using retinoids, you probably will. Okay, so there is no point in using retinoids if you do not protect your skin from the sun's damaging rays. Understand that right now. If you're not gonna use SPF, do not use retinoids. Do remain consistent. It is better to use a lower strength daily than a higher strength less frequently. This is what the data shows us. Daily use is where we see the most benefit. The strength is much less important. So if you try to bump it up in strength and you start getting too much irritation, go back down. All right, use it every day. That is the key. After you get built up, all right? Start off slow. And then eventually once you get to daily usage, stay with daily usage. Another do is be patient. People wanna use this and they wanna see results within a month. It's not gonna happen. When we look at the data, we start to see results in about six months. Okay, this is a long-term investment. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon. You'll start to see improvement in six months. Where you really see dramatic differences is after decades of use. The people who use retinoids and who don't, you start to see real benefit after they've used it for years. So just keep that in mind. This is like a long-term investment. This is like slowly squirreling away money into an investment account. All right, you're not gonna get rich overnight, but then suddenly one day you'll wake up and be like, whoa, I'm aging great, <laughs> you know? Another do of retinol is you can use it around the eyes, probably. Now this skin is much thinner than the other skin on our face. I use it here because this is where I need all of the help. I even use it above my eyes. Make sure that you use a very thin layer and also you may need to use it less frequently on these areas than the other areas. For myself, I use retinoids every single day all around here. Above my eyes, I use it like three to four times a week just to kind of prevent any of that irritation. All right, so as far as the don'ts of retinol, as I said, this is something to use cautiously. Don't use it in the morning. The sun will affect its potency in a negative way. You will be wasting your time and money. Why bother? Don't use it at the same time as vitamin C. This is another reason why you don't want to use retinoids in the morning. The two actually interfere with each other. They kind of prevent each other from working properly. So a good rule of thumb is to use antioxidants like vitamin C in the morning to protect you from UV damage. Those are going to protect you. And then use the retinoids at night to repair the UV damage. All right. And wash your face in between. Okay, so use the antioxidants in the morning, wash your face, and then put on the retinoids at night. And then wash your face again in the morning. 
Don't use retinoids while pregnant. Vitamin A derivatives are best avoided during pregnancy. The oral versions of these like Accutane that um, we see prescribed for acne, you have to go through a crazy program. You have to take pregnancy tests. You have to sign this affidavit swearing that you're not going to get pregnant because it causes major birth defects. Now, the topical version, we haven't necessarily seen it have the same association with birth defects, but I say better safe than sorry. It's not a big deal. It's nine months out of your life. Pause the retinoids while pregnant. You can always resume once you have the baby. Don't use retinoids at the same time as in-office procedures. Check with the provider who is doing the in-office procedure about when to stop and restart the retinoids. Usually they will say three to seven days. I myself get in-office procedures done. I really like the BVL laser. It's really good for my rosacea. They always tell me to wait three days before and wait three days after getting that done for my retinoids. Your provider may be different. It also depends on which procedure you're getting done. Don't use too much. A pea-sized amount is plenty. You do not have to slather on your retinoids. A little bit goes a long way. And don't give up. Many people assume that they can't tolerate retinoids because of the adjustment period. Everyone experiences redness and feeling at first. That is normal. It will take months to see the benefit start, but it takes years of consistent use to make that dramatic difference. And you'll see it like that. I'm starting to get to that point. I've been into skincare for like a decade now, but I'm starting to get to the point where like my classmates from high school and whatnot, I'm starting to see my skin compared to the people's skin who are not doing skin maintenance. The difference is starting to become apparent. Five, 10 years ago, you didn't really see the difference. Okay, now let's talk about other skincare ingredients that can help with skin aging. Antioxidants, super, super important stuff. Vitamin C is a great skin antioxidant. It's also called L-exorbic acid. Sometimes you'll see that listed as the ingredient. It will help fight against oxidative stress and it works well with other antioxidants to maximize efficiency. So vitamin C plays well with all the other antioxidants. You see it in almost every antioxidant serum because it's, it's a good, it's a great ingredient, honestly. It also brightens the skin. It minimizes uneven skin tone and supports collagen production. Works great with every other antioxidant and SPF. It will help boost your SPF as well. I love vitamin C in the morning. Vitamin E, this is another great antioxidant. It contains moisturizing and anti-inflammatory properties as well. So vitamin E is great for people who have very dry or very sensitive skin because vitamin C can sometimes be irritating. So if you're one of those people where you apply the vitamin C and it burns, you might want to consider switching to vitamin E because vitamin C can be a little more intense. Vitamin E is very soothing, also a great antioxidant. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Not tolerating the C, grab the E. Hyaluronic acid is a great antioxidant. It boosts the skin's moisture and expels free radicals from the skin. It also will improve the skin barrier and reduce the visibility of fine lines and wrinkles by retaining moisture in the skin. So it's not going to actually like prevent the lines and wrinkles, but it just makes them look better because it plumps up your skin temporarily. Now, hyaluronic acid is in everything. So you do not have to go and buy a separate hyaluronic acid serum. Literally look at your skincare ingredients. It's in everything. All right. I included it here because I love this ingredient. It's great, but you do not have to buy it separately. I promise you look at any serum, any moisturizer, anything. They all have hyaluronic acid because everyone knows how beneficial it is. So don't waste your money on an extra hyaluronic acid product. You don't need it. It's in everything. Niacinamide, this is another antioxidant. It is a form of vitamin B3. This can help soothe breakouts. So it can be helpful for the people that are dealing with acne as well as skin aging. It also improves skin barrier function and it can fight redness. I really like niacinamide for rosacea and acne prone or sensitive skin. So niacinamide and vitamin E, that can be a good combination for people who are more sensitive, people who have more issues. CoQ10, this is another antioxidant that we see some benefit with. It will prevent the early signs of aging by defending against oxidative stress. It can also boost collagen and it will keep the skin cells alive, which can encourage skin repair. And I'm talking about topical CoQ10. Obviously we all know that it's available in a supplement form, it also works topically as well. Super, super interesting. <clears throat> I swear I'm always losing my voice every time we do a class. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, 
collagen peptides, this is one of my favorite ingredients. The topical form of collagen peptides is extremely helpful at night over retinoids. It seals them in and it boosts the efficacy of retinoids and it provides building blocks for collagen production. I love my collagen peptides. I will not go a night without them. They're amazing. There are a lot of high quality collagen peptide products. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Oral supplementation is another thing that you can consider. It provides the building blocks for collagen production from the inside out. It has been proven in clinical trials to help heal skin after injury. Now, as far as the trials about helping with fine lines, wrinkles, all of that stuff, those are mixed. Those are smaller studies. That's like the evidence there isn't like super amazing, but there's enough evidence that I personally take collagen peptides. A lot of my heroes like Dr. Mary Claire Haver, love her for all about menopause and perimenopause. She takes collagen peptides. A lot of us are on the collagen peptide train. Okay. So that's something that you can consider. I can see people going either way with it. Like, well, the evidence isn't outstanding. I don't know about it. Or there's enough evidence that it might be worth a shot. SPF, so incredibly important. <laughs> this is the most important skincare ingredient, okay? SPF 30 blocks about 97% of the sun's rays. This is good for everyday protection, moderate exposure, driving in your car. SPF 50 blocks 98% of the sun's rays. This is better for prolonged outdoor activities or for those of us with pale skin. I am white as a ghost, so I always go for the SPF 50. SPF measures protection against UVB rays, which cause sunburn, but the UVA rays will lead to premature aging and skin cancers. So broad spectrum is best. When you see the SPF, it's only measuring the UVB, but go for a broad spectrum option, which the physical barrier sunscreens, the ones that I was talking about, the mineral sunscreens, those protect against both. You can also get chemical sunscreens that protect against both. And guys, I just want you to keep in mind what a sunburn truly is. A sunburn is a radiation burn, all right? Sometimes I think that if we just put the proper language to things, it helps. It's not just like, oh, I got a little red from the sun. It is literally a radiation burn, okay? It is exposure to radiation at too high of a frequency that causes your skin to die. Okay, so hopefully that'll just help keep perspective on what exactly that is and how important it is to prevent it. I feel like such a hypocrite here because I did just get burned at the beach last week, but I promise I was applying that SPF like crazy. But we were playing volleyball, we're sweating, we're jumping in and out of the water. I should have applied it even more frequently. Okay, mineral is the best in my opinion. That's the titanium or zinc dioxide. I will show you the product that I use in a minute. It is also best to reapply every two hours, or if you're at the beach, every 30 minutes. I don't know. I applied every two hours and I still have problems. So moisturizer, don't forget this crucial step. Sometimes I see people that are so wrapped up in the serums and the potions and all this that they forget to just put on a high quality moisturizer. This is the final step. Well, unless you're, you know, your SPF is going to go even over top of this, but this is the last step after all the other things, after the serums, the antioxidants, the retinoids. Make sure that you're adding that moisturizer. Seal all of that stuff in so it can stay on your skin and work its magic. Don't forget the moisturizer. All right, so let's talk about ideal regimens. What is the right order to put things on? In general, you wanna put things on from the thinner things to the thicker things. You wanna layer it that way. For the morning, you can cleanse with water only if you have dry skin, or you can use a water-based cleanser for oily skin. So water-based, you'll see, the cleansers will say right on them, whether they're oil or water-based, it's important which one you use. In the morning, when you don't have on any makeup or SPF or anything like that, use a water-based cleanser or just water itself. Like if I have super dry skin, so I just use water in the morning. Next, you will apply an antioxidant serum, something that has CoQ10, CE, niacinamide, whatever antioxidant we choose. Sometimes you'll find something that has multiple different antioxidants, great, but that's gonna be thinner. That's gonna be your bottom layer. It's gonna help protect you against that oxidative damage. Then you want to apply a high quality moisturizer. If you have dry skin, a thicker moisturizer. If you have oily skin, a nice thin water-based one. And then SPF, SPF, SPF. Do not forget your SPF. 
please. <laughs> I hope I can drill that into you guys. Now for the evening, a double cleanse is the way to go. So you're going to start with an oil-based cleanser. I'll show you the one that I use. I use the Clinique Take Off the Day Balm. Love that stuff. But there are lots of other oil-based cleansers out there as well. That will break up and remove your makeup, your SPF, your skincare products, all of the damage of the day. Super important. After you do that, you need to use a water-based cleanser. The water-based cleanser is going to help like clear out your skin itself. It's going to help like keep the pores nice and open. It's going to help remove all of this other stuff. The oil base takes off what you put on your skin. The water base takes off like the junk that's kind of coming out from within your skin, if that makes sense. It's important to do both. Then apply retinoids. If you tolerate them, if you're deciding to use retinoids, after you cleanse, you put the retinoids directly on the skin. Let that sit for a minute and then apply a high quality moisturizer, preferably one with peptides. Okay, what do I use? Now, this is where you guys are going to get to see the ebook. I'm gonna go ahead and drop it into the app. I am also gonna post it on social media. It is going to have links to the products that I use because people are always asking me. Now, let me say this. When it comes to skincare, you do not have to splurge. A lot of times these really expensive products are not even evidence-based where they're like singing to the seaweed and the products cost $200 for a little tube. They're not even good products, okay? When it comes to, now most of the time we associate expense with quality. Like for myself, all of the denim that I buy, that is gonna be high quality denim. I'm not gonna spend $10 on a pair of jeans. I'm spending more like $200 on a pair of jeans, right? And a lot of times it's like that with clothing, with food, right? You know, we wanna buy this organic food, this grass-fed beef, it's higher quality, it's more expensive. It is the opposite with skincare. A lot of these brands that consistently create high quality, evidence-based products that are excellent. They're like the cheaper brands. Um, Oil of Olay, La Roche-Posay, CeraVe, Cetaphil. These are super, super high quality products. So that's why I went ahead and put together the ebook because the products that I use, they're all cheap. You can get them off of Amazon, but for like 10 to $30 at the most for like a three month supply of product, right? So don't think that you need to go and buy like La Mer or, you know, all of these crazy, crazy expensive products. These drugstore brands are actually making super, super, super quality products that are evidence-based. They are using ingredients that are proved by science. So that's why I thought that the ebook would be helpful. So when you look at the ebook at the very end, you'll see, what do I use? You can literally just click, click the hyperlink and it'll take you right to Amazon. I don't know why it keeps making that noise. Hopefully you guys can hear it and I don't just sound like a crazy person, um, but it'll take you right to Amazon and you can look at the products I use. And guys, you don't have to use what I use. You can use whatever you want, but um, just keep in mind that a lot of times the cheaper skincare products are actually the good ones. All right, very interesting stuff. Okay, Q&A time. Let me stop my screen share here so I can actually see you guys' chat questions. Okay. Oh, look, we do have some chat going on. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Let's look at the questions. Good evening. Yay. Awesome. Thank you for the reply. I'll have to rewatch later. Okay. Awesome. Am I the only one who cannot hear the presentation? Oh no. Okay. So some people can hear, some people can't. Guys, I don't know. It's probably me. My Zoom, I I'm terrible. <laughs> Saw the burn line. Yeah, yeah, you saw the burn from my craziness, yes. Okay, now does anyone have any questions? The audio is great, okay, good. I'm glad most people seem to be having no issues with the audio. I'll post this on YouTube as well and share it on social media. Obviously, you guys who are in the app know that I share everything in there first thing, so. All right, no questions from anyone? Okay. I guess we are good to go. Oh, here we go. Vital collagen peptides. Yes, Vital is a good brand of collagen peptides. Absolutely. Um, honestly, I change my collagen peptides from time to time. Right now I'm using um, a different one. I, I have used Vital before and I like that. Um, I also, there's one that I shared from Amazon that I was using forever. I think it's called like Zabora. Uh, so I, I just, I change it up. I, I'm not even really sure why. I'm just like, I want to try all the different collagen peptides, but they're all pretty decent. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them are. 
Oh, thank you so much, David. I appreciate you. Is there any treatment for the white spots? So check in with your dermatologist. Sometimes it's best to get an in-office procedure to treat something like that. You can try retinoids. Um, they usually are much better with dark spots. <laughs> the light spots, that type of discoloration, it's not going to be as helpful, just being completely realistic with you. Um, but try and prevent those with proper SPF will help a lot. And even if you've already developed it, sometimes starting to use SPF can help. Okay, so it's not too late. Apply the SPF, see if the appearance improves. Is oil oral the little is oral hyaluronic acid beneficial? I think it is. Um, now, once again, the data is pretty mixed here. So it's not like a knockout of the park, like retinoids are like, yes, absolutely, they're great. It's mixed. Um, but hyaluronic acid, I personally am using it because I think that it can help improve skin function. Um, I have done a couple videos about it. So if you're in the app, check out the skincare videos and you'll see a breakdown of that. But yes, we do see some clinical trials indicating some benefit with hyaluronic acid supplementation. Once again, it generally tends to be over time. It's not something where you're going to like start it and next week be like, oh gosh, my skin is nice and plump. Um, these are all long-term investments. When it comes to skincare, most of these are long-term investments. The things where you see the really quick difference are going to be in-office procedures. So if you do go get Botox, you're going to notice a difference right away. If you go and get lasers like the BBL, the IPL, all of these different things, you're going to see a dramatic difference right away. Um, if you're doing only things at home, it's going to take time. If you take oral vitamin C and E, are there any problems? No. Kimberly, no. You can use oral and topical. Absolutely. Um, with the Topical, you're not really going to absorb it systemically. It's going to just kind of stay right there on the skin. What retinoid, ah, what retinoid do you recommend for under and over the eyes for men, preferably? Um, so when it comes to retinoids, honestly, same products for men and women. I personally am using something from Dear Brightly. You'll see a link to that in the ebook um, because I'm using the prescription. So it's it's tretinoin. It requires a prescription. If you use the code Jamie20, you will get 20% off with that. Um, but they have like a really cool retinoid product that's super, super gentle, designed specifically for eyes. I started using that. I did use just the regular tretinoin on my eyes before, but I will say I had more irritation. I just had more issues because that skin is so thin. You can also just use over-the-counter retinol. Rock has a really good over-the-counter retinol. That's going to be in the ebook. There are honestly lots of them. You guys, you cannot go wrong with like CeraVe and Cetaphil. Those are like just really, really high quality science brands. And the nice thing with like CeraVe and Cetaphil is they're not girly girly. So you're not going to walk around smelling like flowers or something. They usually come in like these very clinical, like white jars. So a lot of men are not opposed to getting those products because they just look like very basic sciencey products and they're great stuff. Really, really good stuff. La Roche-Posay, also very, very good. Um, let's see. By the way, I'm OCD in that chair behind you needs to be straight. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I know. Listen, you guys, at least now my house is in order. If you guys were here for last month's class, we were redoing the floors. I, it was like chaos behind me. So at least now, like it's not insane, but you're right. That chair is a little off center. <laughs> thank you, Jamie. I washed and moisturized with CeraVe. Perfect. Yeah, good stuff. And thank you so much, Paul. I appreciate you. I appreciate all of you guys. Thank you so much for being here today. I kind of like it when the classes are smaller. I feel like it's more homey. It's kind of intimidating when there's like 50 people in the class. I'm like, ah. <laughs> so it was nice for you guys to show up today taking time out of your busy week to spend with me. I appreciate you. It's nice to have people to talk to instead of just talking to a recording screen for YouTube for later. All right. Well, oh, thank you so much, David. That's so sweet. <laughs> All right. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful day and I will see you next month or the month after we'll keep coming up with new class uh, topics. Have a good